Hi artists, this is Mr. Reinhard, and today we are going to be making art involving the white-tailed deer. You see it right here, a drawing of a buck. Most of you have been learning about the life cycle of white-tailed deer, and they are very important animals for our ecosystem in Virginia, and they've been around for a long time. I'm sure most of you have seen a deer in your yard or around the school or just when you're driving anywhere. In fact, the deer were really important to Native American people who lived in this region and continue to live in this region, including the members of the large Powhatan tribe. A guiding Native American principle is respect and honor, and when they hunted the deer, they used all parts of the deer without wasting anything. They only hunted what they need and made clothing, tools, ornaments, and food from all parts of the deer. You can imagine the skin and the antlers and the bones of the deer being very important for making clothing, tools, ornaments, deer, uh, and other things. In fact, my brother-in-law belongs to a Native American tribe called the Chickahominy tribe, which lived alongside the larger Powhatan tribe. And when he participates in his tribal rituals, he wears an entire outfit made from buckskin or deer skin. So this animal is very important to Native American people and it is respected and honored for that reason. Today, we're going to be making a deer that can move throughout the woods. So we're going to be making a birch tree forest and a deer separately, and then cutting the deer out and weaving him or threading him into the woods so that he can move in front of and behind each of the trees. So the first step that we are going to do is the birch forest. You're going to need two blank white sheets of paper for this project, as well as a pencil and maybe some markers, colored pencils or crayons, whatever you have, we can make work, okay? I'm going to be using markers, um, but if you only have a few colors of colored pencils or crayons, that is totally fine. I promise that once you add some of the details of the trees and the deer, any color that you're able to add to it will look very, very cool. So the first thing that I want you to do is hold your paper the long way and fold it hamburger fold from the bottom corner to the top corner and crease it. Okay, so I've got it long way. And now I want you to make a few cuts in multiples of two. Okay, that means that we need to do two, four, six, I think we're gonna do about eight cuts. Okay, we're not gonna go all the way to the edge. I want you to cut starting from the folded side. So see I have it folded and this is the folded side. And I'm going to do cut, but notice I didn't go all the way. If I went all the way, then this piece would fall off and we need it to stay attached. Now that's just one. Remember I said that we needed to make our cuts in multiples of two. We're actually making the outside of the tree trunks. So I'm gonna do another cut, one, two, and they're, they both go to the same spot. Again, I do not cut all the way through. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space, okay, so that the deer has room to, um, to spread out in between the trees. I'm gonna do another one, two, and I'm gonna put another tree pretty close by. One, two, so far I have two, four, six cuts, and I bet I can fit an eighth cut in right over here, watch. One, two, cool. All right, open it back up. And you have a piece of paper that is attached at the top and the bottom, but it has all these long slits. Now here's what I need from you. You can use a pencil and press really nice and dark, or you can use a marker or crayons or colored pencils, but choose black or gray or blue or purple or green, a darker color, okay? And I want you to draw from the top to the bottom all the way along the edge of your cut, okay? Now I know we didn't cut from the top to the bottom, but we're gonna Draw our black lines, purple, blue, whatever color you're using, from the top to the bottom, all along the cut. And you're gonna say, Mr. Reinhardt, does it matter if I'm on the inside of the cut or the outside of the cut? It doesn't matter, I promise. I've done it both ways, okay? It's gonna look great either way. So now look, I made eight cuts, which means I should have eight lines. Let's count them and check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, perfection. And you can already start to see that once I turn these into trees, I'll be able to slip the deer in between each of these trees. I'm already super excited about this project. Okay, these don't look like trees yet. The thing that I like about birch trees and the reason that I chose them, I know we don't have a ton of them in Virginia, but we do have some um, and they're bright white. And so the reason I chose it for this project is because the bright white trunks will actually stand out against the, um, 
the undergrowth, the vegetation that's on the bottom, and the leaves that are on the top, okay? So birch trees are bright white. They have this sort of papery bark that peels off. Um, and when I was a kid, I used to peel it off and write on it like it was a scroll. But it does have some black marks on it. And so I'm gonna do these horizontal black marks. See how I'm just sort of flicking my wrist like this? One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, from the edge of the trunk, but not all the way across. Just sort of going up, one, two, one, two, three. Watch, I'm gonna do it pretty fast. You don't need to really worry about the detail. One, two, one, two, three starting to look like those birch trees. Now there's another mark that birch trees sometimes have, and it's sort of like this triangle. So your lines could be horizontal. I don't like this one right here, but you know what? It's okay because trees are organic, they're not perfect, and I bet that I could find a birch tree that had that mark right there, so I'm not gonna stress about it too much. So I'm showing you a couple different ways that you can make your birch trees look like birch trees that we might actually see out in nature. All right. Pretty cool, these are nice stri uh, straight white trunks with black marks. I do want to add a couple bit of a uh, couple branches. So I'm gonna go like this. And as I go further away from the tree, I want you to release the pressure of your hand so that the branches are thicker closer to the tree and thinner as they go away from the tree. That's my artist's trick for today. Thick to thin like that. And that makes them look very branch-like and twiggy, okay? The thinner that I can get those twigs on the edge of the tree, the more realistic it's gonna look. Now remember, we're in a forest, and in forests, everything overlaps. Look, I did that one too thick all the way across, but you know what? It's okay. It still looks good. Okay, I think I'm done with my branches. If you wanna add more, that's awesome. What I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to try to find the cap to my marker. There we go, don't let it dry out. Snap that cap and put the marker back. And I'm gonna be putting some red and orange and yellow down in the bottom in the underbrush here. So I'm gonna go, let's see, if you've got yellow, add some yellow and you're like, oh, it looks like Reinhardt is scribbling. I am, I'm always looking for an excuse to scribble while I'm making artwork because I feel like it makes it loose and fresh and exciting. So I did yellow, notice that I did yellow and I didn't go all the way to the bottom. If you do, that's okay because I'm gonna overlap. Overlapping is super important for us. I'm gonna overlap some orange next. Okay, still not going to the bottom, but if I do, that's okay, because I'm gonna use an even darker color, my red, for the very last row of this sort of like, these um, bushes and shrubs and weeds and grass and whatever's going on down here behind the trees. Now notice that I didn't go on top of the trees, but if I did do a little bit on top of the trees, actually, it kinda looks cool. Because, you know, not everything lines up when we're talking about nature. All right, rock on. Now I'm gonna be doing the leaves at the top. So I have some greens. If you only have one type of green, that's fine. I've got a couple, because I've got these fancy markers that I got, which kind of blend together sometimes, because they're like watercolor markers, so they act like paint sometimes. You can see if I get too close to my um, branch, it kind of picks up some of that black and starts to spread it a little bit, but I think it looks cool. So if yours starts to smear a little bit like mine is and makes it darker, don't stress. Don't worry about it. That means it's just looking like mine. All right, cool. I'm going to add some bright green because I love neon colors. And this time of year, springtime, I've noticed a lot of awesome neon colors going on. And finally, I'm going to add this kind of dark brownish green. These look like older leaves, not those new buds, but those kind of like older leaves. If you've got a brown, you could use a brown, even gray. Okay. And then just a little bit of blue sky in the middle. You know, I think we're about ready to start drawing our deer. You've got your forest here. So you can put that forest aside and we're gonna start drawing our white-tailed deer. Remember, it looks like that. This is gonna be a little bit tricky and I'm gonna show you some, some secrets, some hacks for how to draw white-tailed deer. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about the white-tailed deer. They are the largest herbivores in Virginia. Okay, that means that they eat only plants. All right, they don't eat animals. They're found in all areas of Virginia, including forests and open fields, mountaintops, coastal inlands, and in our cities and towns, just like Charlottesville and Albemarle County. Their diet consists of grass and leaves and nuts and fruit and fungi, which is like mushrooms, 
and they have very, very few predators. So basically, hunters and sometimes, um, unfortunately, cars um, are their biggest predator because they live sort of in the same places that we live. Uh, newborn white-tailed deer are called fawns. Okay, they're the really young one and they have spots. And then they're called yearlings when they're about a year old. And as adults, the males, like this one, are called bucks and they have antlers. That's how you would know that they um, are bucks, the males, and the females are called does. So they're reddish brown or tan in the summer, like right about now, and they're grayish brown in the winter, which I think is super cool that they change colors. And actually, I'm not quite sure why that is. I think I probably need to look that up after this video. I think maybe it helps them camouflage and blend in um, with the changing leaf colors from summer to fall, but I'm not actually exactly sure. So um, the most important thing about them and the way that you would recognize that it's a white-tailed deer is that the underside of the throat and the belly are white and the tail is brown above and white below. That's why it's called a white-tailed deer. Okay, so when it comes time for us to color this deer, if we have time, remember it's gonna be brown, reddish brown, and then white belly, white throat, and the white underside of the tail. All right, take a deep breath, whew, because we are about to draw our white-tailed deer. Let's see. The first thing that I wanna do is, I'm gonna be using a pencil because I'm gonna be drawing some shapes that I don't need uh, for the whole time. And that means that I'm gonna to want to erase a little bit. So let's start with the body. The body's gonna be a little bit of like a potato shape, okay? So go ahead and draw like on your second white sheet of paper, about half the paper, okay? You don't want it to be too big because it's gotta fit behind the trees. I want you to do like a potato shape, okay? It's like an oval. And then for the neck, we're gonna do another oval. This potato's horizontal, it's laying down. We're gonna do another oval like straight up or kind of at a diagonal here, okay? So I'm gonna do another smaller oval, another smaller potato shape for the neck. And then finally, another smaller, even smaller oval at the top of that for the head. Let's start adding some detail, okay? Because right now it just looks like three potatoes. It does not look like a white-tailed deer. Here we go. I want to add two leaf shapes for the ears. Deer kind of have big ears. The baby deer, the, um, the fawns, they have the biggest ears because they haven't really grown into them yet. But these bucks have these sort of almond or leaf shaped ears here with two lines on the edge. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw the antlers at the top because those are the most fun thing to draw. Maybe you should save that till the end for a little bit of a treat, but I'm gonna do these horns and depending on how many um, points that they have, um, they could call them different. They, they might say that this has one, two, three, four, five points for this buck, for the antlers. And they have all different number of points. So you can do four, five, make it look however you want. Cool. I can sort of tell that it's a deer, but I need to add two eyes on the side of the head like this, they have sort of sweet looking eyes. Make sure that you just do a little round black circle. And then sort of like human eyes, this little curve at the top and curve at the bottom. Okay. And then like a two slanted lines here, two slanted lines out. And then for the nose, a triangle shaded in and then a little square shaded in okay and then a lower lip like that so you can sort of see okay cool now the legs are gonna be really tough wildlife um, uh, legs they're very muscular okay so sort of like horses and deer they're gonna have these legs that have um, a lot of different joints on them so we're gonna start by drawing a triangle an upside down triangle here and then two straight lines, and then a square for the hoof. Don't worry, we're gonna smooth it out and make it look a, more, a little more realistic in a second. I want another little triangle back here. This is gonna be the leg on the other side, the other front leg. Two straight lines, and then a hoof. Notice that my hoof is a little bit offset. It's not exactly at the bottom of those two straight lines, it's a little bit over here, okay? I'm gonna go do the same thing on the back. An upside down triangle and it's sort of pointing that way okay it's not completely pointing down but my two lines are going to be coming this way so the triangle goes this way two lines go this way and then my square hoof 
you notice a pattern, right? I've pretty much drawn these three legs the same way, but just pointing in different directions. Last one, the back leg on the other side, triangle, lines. Notice that those lines are pointing triangle, lines, okay? So they're not straight up and down. If you can pull this off, that is amazing because this is not easy to do. Already I like how this looks, but I want to smooth it out a little bit. Before I forget, this is a white-tailed deer, so we've got to put our tail on here, okay? Remember that the underside is going to be white. This top part's going to be brown, brownish red, okay? Don't let me get carried away. i got to smooth out these lines. So here we go. Let's erase this line, this line, and this line. Remember that deer's legs are not triangles. That was just for reference to help us make the right shape. I'm gonna add a little bit of a muscle here. I'm gonna smooth it out, sort of make these legs a little bit more realistic by curving these lines, okay? So if you can follow along with me and smooth out these lines, that is awesome. If you can't, don't worry about it. I bet your deer already looks good enough that anyone who looks at it would be able to tell that it's a deer, okay? Especially if you drew those antlers. All right, front, I'm gonna add another little curve here here, and then smooth out this triangle to make it look a little more like a real leg. See how I'm just sort of curving it a little bit? Coloring in those hoofs. I'm basically gonna leave this back one the same. I've noticed that I need to erase these two lines so that the neck and face don't look like a potato still. And I'm actually really happy with this deer. So now, I'm gonna cut it out and combine it with my forest. I'm about out of time for coloring the deer, but if you remember, we talked about how the deer was reddish brown in the summer, the spring and summer, and then it turned to a little bit more of a grayish brown in the fall and the winter. The belly, the underside of the tail, and the neck are all white, and if you have colored pencils or markers or crayons, you can go ahead and color it in. Okay, and just leave the belly, the neck, and the underside of the tail white. So luckily, I have a little bit of a brown pencil right here, and I'm just gonna do a little bit of shading, just so I remember what color it is. I've got a little bit of a brown. You can take a lot more time and really add a lot of detail. I'm just gonna add a little bit of spot coloring. That's when artists don't color the whole thing, but just some of it to sort of show you a little bit of how it looks. And now, I tuck him into my forest trees, and I have a white-tailed deer in a Virginia forest. Thanks so much for following along with me, and have a great day.